cardiovascular examination. When locating for the PMI or the point of maximal impulse, carefully inspect the anterior chest by shining a tangential light across the chest wall to appreciate the apex. Take note of how I handled or positioned the pen light. It should be tangential or oblique. Your aim is to produce shadows. So I'm having a hard time looking at the PMI of this patient. So you have a technique to displace the chest, uh, the heart anteriorly. So you need to position your patient at the left lateral decubitus position. So in that position, it displaces your heart anteriorly. When you have already identified the point of maximal impulse or the PMI, characterize it whether it is tapping, whether it is sustained, which suggests left ventricular hypertrophy, or is it diffuse? Locate the PMI by interspaces by determining which interspace. Is it the 5th, the 6th, 7th interspace? And the distance in centimeters from the mid-sternal line. So from the mid-sternal line, use a ruler or a tape measure and you measure from this part, from the mid-sternal area up to the PMI. And take note of the centimeters. So assess the location, amplitude, duration, and diameter. In doing cardiac percussion, starting with the left side of the chest, percuss from resonance toward cardiac dullness. From lateral, going to the center. So since this area is the area of the, the left lung, you will elicit resonance. So you percuss from this area, percuss, percuss, resonance, resonance, and then dull. So as soon as you hear the dull sound, as you elicit the dull sound, you get your tape measure or your ruler and then measure the distance from the midline up to the area of cardiac dullness. Normally, it should approximately between 2 to 3 centimeters. After which, you percuss the third intercostal space. The, the third intercostal space, the same thing, the same procedure that you will do. Start from the lateral side, going medial. So percuss, resonance, 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 then dull. So you have already reached the border of the heart and then you get your tape measure, measure from the midline up to the area of cardiac dullness. So approximately it should measure around 3.5 to 4.5 centimeters. Then after the third intercostal space, go to the fourth intercostal space. So percuss from the lateral side, area of the lungs, so you will elicit resonance, 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 then dull. Then you measure from the, from the midline up to the area where you, where you heard the dull sound, where you elicited the dull sound. And normally, it should be 5 to 6 centimeters. The distance should be around 5 to 6 centimeters. Then go to the next intercoastal space. At the fifth intercostal space, you will elicit here resonance, 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 and then as soon as you as you reach the lateral border of the heart, you will elicit dullness, and then you measure from the mid uh, from the midline up to the area where you heard the dull sound, and approximately it should uh, measure the distance should measure at approximately seven to nine centimeters. So in this image, what do you think is the problem with this image? So this doctor here is performing cardiac percussion, but there is a problem with that technique here. So I will point the problem here. So when you percuss, it should only be, the, oh, there should be only one finger that would touch the skin of the patient or the patient so this area here is the stationary finger and this area should only touch this area this finger 
and this finger should not touch the chest of the patient. The same, pro the same principle should apply to other systems when you do percussion. Only one finger should touch the patient and you strike the area in be between the interphalangeal joints. When doing palpation, familiarize the areas where to palpate. First, the right second interspace, left second interspace, right ventricular area, epigastric area, and left ventricular area. To palpate heaves and lifts, use your palm and or hold your finger pads flat or obliquely against the chest. Do not rub your hand nor do a rotating movement on the chest. Just place your hand over the chest without unnecessary motions. Observe the video as the examiner's hand touches the different areas to palpate. The second right interspace area, left second interspace area, the right ventricular area, epigastric area or the subcyphoid area, and the left ventricular area. Four thrills. Press the ball of your hand, which is the padded area of your palm, near the wrist, firmly on the chest to check for a buzzing or vibratory sensation, which is caused by an underlying turbulent flow. Just place the ball of your hand over the chest without unnecessary motions and follow the different areas of palpation. The second right interspace left second interspace, right ventricular area, the epigastric or subcyphoid area, and the left ventricular area. When doing cardiac auscultation, listen on the following areas. At the second right interspace, second left interspace, down the left sternal border and across the apex. So these are the six listening areas of the chest wall. Observe the video as we familiarize the six listening areas of the heart. The second right interspace, second left interspace, down the left sternal border and across the apex. Now place your stethoscope at the second right interspace, starting from the base of your heart. The pattern that we will be using here is from the base going to the apex of the heart. Now the second left interspace, going down to the lower left sternal border. and across the apex.